Uh, welcome back to the uh, Flogsville podcast. It is the round four wrap. Uh, joining me, we've only got one other coach uh, this week. It is coach of the Rabbitohs, Daniel. Hello, mate. Uh, hello, Scott. It's fantastic to be here. Uh, you know, I always uh, comment about, you know, people arriving after losses and I, I can't help but notice that uh, our Mr. 100 has done a, a disappearing act sitting at one and three, but uh, it's fantastic to be here, mate. Uh, very welcome, mate. It's uh, yeah, Ben. Unfortunately, Mr. One Hundred, he he's gone to Bali uh, on a cricket trip, so hopefully he can come back refreshed um, and sort of kick his season into gear. Uh, let's get into uh, pig of the week, and it was uh, my God, your Liberatore. We've we've talked about him on the podcast, uh, being one of the sides off to a, a fantastic start, and in a low scoring round, Rabs, uh, he managed to get the chocolates twenty seventy five. Uh, it looks like your boys were, were going to be close on Sunday afternoon, uh, Monday, sorry, uh, Easter Monday, but uh, James Sicily, we'll talk more about him a bit later, I think, uh, just couldn't quite get the job done for your boys. But um, for Hugh, mate, uh, what stood out for his side? Well, I think, as we said before, Hugh um, has got a really well-rounded side and uh, his ladder position really certainly not indicative of, of where his team's at at the moment, I think. Uh, as you said, a bit of a low-scoring round. Um, you know, Liam Jones still floating around his back uh, his back line with 30 isn't ideal. But everyone else has just put in really solid scores. Uh, and obviously, the big bean pole, Team English, uh, with 145, uh, really, really strong, as he was for a number of other coaches as well. So, uh, Hugh, you know, he's got a really strong side. He's got a couple of things to work through this week, as a lot of coaches do. But uh, he's in a really strong position. No, nah, excellent. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into that, I'm sure, about the Doherty and Day issues. But uh, good signs for Hugh. Uh, let's have a look at our spud of the week. Uh, I haven't actually had a look at it. I think it is, or oh, it's heels just with an 1878 over. Uh, the B-Sharps were pretty close with an 1882 team. Oh, no, search. Correction, I stand corrected. This is uh, about how good our preparation is. Uh, with an 1849... Hoffleberry FC, let's open that up. Just so many scores in the 1800s. It was just one of those uh, rounds. Jeez. Two, two words, Scott. James yeah. Sicily. James Sicily <laughs> as captain. Incredible. Um, potentially, like just doing a quick suss of this, could have won this game, Search had that captaincy choice not occurred. Uh, and he made a slightly more uh, or slightly wiser choice with the captain. On the contrasting side, I know, again, we'll look at matches after to see the opposition skip pump in 252. Mm. Um, that's a fair impact. So, yeah, I mean, Serge is, is not doing a hell of a lot wrong there, to be honest, really, with the rest of his side. But uh, when your captain produces a total of 98, you're probably going to be the spud of the week, you would have thought. Yeah, I'm, I'm fortunate for him. We saw he was uh, a bit of back and forth. Fourth with Brett in the uh, in the chat about Nick Dacos taking that one twenty six, but uh, it was it was to no avail for, uh, no avail for Serge unfortunately with uh, James Sicily, but um, yeah, it's just one of those things. Unfortunately, the captaincy there is when it's so tight, and especially in a low scoring week, it just makes all the difference. Um, Brett with one of the biggest scorers from his captain. Uh, just a few few players, probably Callum Mills and Rory Laird there for Brett, underperforming, um, been a little bit disappointing to start. But in terms of uh, every, everyone else, he's, uh, he's, he's going well um, and moves to fifth on the ladder. So he's in that usual top eight position, which is good for him. Uh, Serge, I think, has a good side, just the captaincy sort of stuff. Once he gets it right, um, yeah. Davy on field two isn't ideal, but um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, both these sides have Doherty and Day to deal with already. So yeah, interesting times ahead for both these teams. All right, let's move on uh, to our first matchup, Rabs. We had Arm McRae uh, defeating Total Eclipse of the Heart. Sam, uh, another win, four and zip for his side, Rabs. Uh, what do we, let's let's talk about uh, his side first. What did you see from Sam's boys this week? Yeah, probably one of his weaker performances, really, uh, from a scoring perspective, but um, still enough to get the job done. Uh, probably his back line uh, fielding sort of Gingby and, um, and Wilmot, you know, those two have really been pumping out better scores than that 
um, pretty regularly. Um, so that was a little bit disappointing for him. And Davy on field, as uh, you just mentioned before, is probably not ideal. Uh, but other than that, you know, he's got some really strong selections, as we've said right from the start of the year. And probably ones for me that stand out are blokes like Tom Green and Caleb Sarong that, um, you know, potentially could go one way or the other. Uh, and even James Warple, who's been a little bit inconsistent, but um, is getting the job done for him. So, yeah, a, a day and Doherty owner. So it's something he's got to contend with. Um, on heels aside, there's got to be some real questions asked about the defensive line here. <laughs> particularly the fact that a player um, in, what are we dealing with, round four, is fielding a zero with no emergency cover. Like, what the hell? Um, that, that's bizarre. That's all I've got to say. But the rest of his side actually isn't too bad, as we've said throughout this year. It's definitely improved. Um, but fielding a zero in round four is just uh, unacceptable behaviour, I would have thought. Yeah, couldn't agree more, mate. It's, um, yeah, Sam looking strong as ever. Like you said, those boys, even Zebo as well, uh, jumping on him uh, when he did. And and Grundy, obviously, uh, being similar to you, having that Darcy Cameron issue and putting the C on Brody Grundy too. I love that uh, with his matchup against the Eagles paying off uh, for Sam. And, yeah, he was just that back line. We've talked about it so far. It is his Achilles heel. Um, yeah, Miller Bergman being laid out is unfortunate, but it just shows you bench cover. And I think this week we'll be telling as well in defence uh, what teams do based on their bench cover and, and what's going on there. So uh, we will move on to uh, your boys, Rabs. Uh, nice win against Sean Newell. I'm, I'm sure you would have enjoyed that, mate. A tight contest, though. Uh, you will get you get got the job done uh, with the 2017, one of the highest scores this round. Uh, beating Newley with a, who scored nineteen ninety eight. So uh, talk us through your victory, mate. Uh, yeah, interesting matchup to be honest. So I, I felt uh, pretty comfortable to be honest after the Clayton Oliver um, captaincy choice went the way it did, and uh, even to half time in the Hawthorne Geelong game felt extremely comfortable, given that uh, it was just Will Day on his side versus Sicily and Warple on my side, and then. Uh, I did check my phone almost in disbelief halfway through the last quarter to the point I needed to turn the game on to work out um, where the hell James Sicily was. But, yeah, we ended up scraping home, which was, um, yeah, good because um, it was looking a little bit dicey there for about five or ten minutes. But, yeah, I guess on um, on Sean's side, probably um, Liam Jones as a, as a pod, um, not ideal and, and definitely someone he'd be looking to get off field. And then probably some of his interesting selections that he always loves doing, like Chera, um, Degoe, mm. um, just not going his way. Um, and the same as Caleb Daniel and, and Hayden Young. So none of those players really fired for him, which I think has hurt him. Yeah, absolutely. And just to add, those Port boys, that Port Sydney game wasn't a fantasy-friendly game. It was extremely tight. And Horn Francis and Rosie there with a pair of 69s. Um, yeah, it's just unfortunate there for Sean. Did a lot right. And yourself, mate, so Clayton Oliver, what a player. And to put the C on him must be a good feeling. Uh, nice to see Finn Callahan bounce back as well for you, mate. Um, but Jordan Dawson, watching that on Saturday, my goodness, he was impressive. Um, obviously, a bit of midfield time happened against Port, but didn't quite have the score. Uh, but against Fremantle, he was able to do what he wanted. And, yeah, he was very, very impressive to watch. So... Uh, good signs there. And Todd Goldstein, mate, a bit of a risk for you, but it seems to have paid off this way. Uh, yeah, not not an ideal selection, but uh, I think you highlighted it earlier, Scotty, that a few coaches, including myself, were stung a bit with the Darcy Cameron situation. And, uh, yeah, that was really – I mean, the other player I brought in this week was Stocker um, to cover Constable. And, um, yeah, financially, that's all I could really do. So, um, yeah, it worked probably as well as it was going to work. Nice. All right. Uh, let's move on to, well, we spoke about the pick of the week. He had a very nice win up against Team GC. So we'll just probably touch on Team GC and, and what's going on there with Zach. Uh, Rory Laird is captain. Just not quite... Uh, doing enough. And then Callum Mills, as we've mentioned, and even Cogs has been a little bit down the last couple of weeks, uh, just not getting the job done. Harris Andrews, good to see him. So he's still scoring well, but uh, not quite the hundreds uh, that he has been scoring. Uh, anything else that took uh, caught your eye from Zach's side, mate? 
No, I think you've nailed it there, Scotty. I think just a few few guys not performing to the level that he'd be hoping for um, with Mills and Laird in particular. Um, mm. And then a few of those medium sort of guys like uh, O'Brien and um, – or really uh, Oscar Baker as well, you know, not quite sort of delivering what he's, he's after there. But, yeah, still plenty of opportunities moving forward for Team GC. But, yeah, definitely a few players he'd look to – he'd be looking to change up. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah, huge, as we've mentioned, going really well uh, in sixth place. Uh, so looking at the goods there. Uh, let's move on, mate. Let's move on. Let's keep this going. The Keys with a nice victory. Uh, he's up into third, a sneaky good start to the season for Jake uh, with a 2001 getting the job done against King Kunta. Um, talk us through this one, mate. I'm just going to hopefully load... Uh, what did you see from – we'll start with Jake. What went right for Jake? Well, I think there's a lot to like for Jake with uh, Mil- yeah, similar story to what we were just talking about um, with some other coaches of things that have gone wrong. So Mills with a 75, Sicily 49 and, and Wilmot on field 36, Bergman being a laid out uh, and Rosie only getting 69 and Jake still cracked 2,000. So – um, I think his ladder position is is a really good indicator, obviously, that he's made a really positive start this year. And I think it's probably the best start he's made uh, in the fantasy comp. So uh, hopefully lots of upside for Jake because um, he's got a strong foundation, but he's got to work mm-hmm. with it because it's a pretty tight comp. And I guess on uh, the side of King Kunta, um, I, I'm looking straight at the Lizard, the lizard uh, <laughs> with 64. Um, but really, just uh, that's probably a bit of a pattern, really, if you look through the side of blokes like McGrath and also Tom Mitchell and Jai Newcomb all getting mm-hmm. 60s. Probably just not having those blokes really going big is uh, hurting there. Yeah, it'll be interesting what Peter does with those guys because it's getting to the point where you, you've got to sort of be pretty ruthless with some of those guys. They are dropping cash um, and they're just not performing. So you're Tom Mitchell, Andy McGrath. Uh, Newcomb, as you said, just not getting to the level at the moment for Peter. So that's holding him back. But yeah, nice work by Jake. Oliver again as his skipper. Uh, and yeah, as you said, like Toot Miller, Callum Mills, uh, I think Toot Miller's just starting to heat up. So uh, really good signs for Jake uh, at the start of this season. All right, let's move on uh, to the Crouching Wines. Uh, getting the job done. We talked about Hoffleberry FC. Uh, let's talk about Brett really quickly. Uh, well, well, we did talk about him a little bit, I suppose. Uh, he's up into fifth, looking the goods. Um, anything else you want to mention about this matchup, mate? No, nah, not a lot. Just uh, captaincy choice really did hurt Serge uh, without stating the obvious. And uh, I think he could have won this game without that, to be honest. I think this would have been really, really close. So mm. um, disappointing for Serge. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's uh, move on to the next matchup here. It was uh, the Bourbon Bur- Burtons getting the win, uh, 2009, up against the Guns and Rosies with a 1949. Uh, ben Side, as we mentioned from the top, just just not quite firing as he did last year uh, with a top 100 finish, of course. But Brad, um, despite his record, I think he's got a very good side. Uh, talk us through this one, mate. What do you see? There's not a lot of pods. I think this is probably the smallest amount of pods in a game uh, at this time of the year. And really the one that stands out in terms of low scoring is Tom Power with yep. 48 for Ben. Uh, all the other pods going 70 plus. You know, Ned Moyle going above 70 for uh, for Brad is, is huge. Um, obviously quite a risky call there to bring him in or field him at the very least. Mm. Um but, you know, these, these are going to be two pretty strong sides, I, I think, even though the latter probably doesn't indicate it. There's still a lot going right for both of them. Um, yeah, not a lot in this. Obviously, the captaincy choice went in favour of Oliver by a few points, which was helpful. Uh, and Tom Power, really, as the as the pot, I think, has, has really hurt uh, the Guns and Rosies. Yeah, absolutely. Just one of those, yeah, mid-prices that just didn't quite work. Hayden Young, um, yeah, I got rid of him this week, but just just watching him on Saturday again, Fremantle in general, apart from Sarong and Brayshaw, um, they're just, I'm not sure what they're doing, to be honest. Like, they're just, they're, they're either going, chipping it around, but Hayden Young looks lost out there. Um, and even Jack McRae um, was in the midfield a bit more this week, watching that game again. The wet conditions didn't really suit him. Um, but impressive from Brad, really, for Wits to be laid out and sort of quickly changed to get Moyle in as his emergency. 
Um, yeah, showed really that, that's one in the matchup, basically. I think most people might have even just taken a donut or um, tried to get Tim English in there. But um, Clayton Oliver, captaincy once again, I think just got him over the line there. So really good signs for for Brett, um, as we've mentioned throughout the pod, a great start for him. Um, and we will move on, mate. Uh, let's talk about uh, the V-Sharps up against Phenomenal. Phenomenal with another win. Uh, it's impressive signs after a slow round one for Tom. Uh, talk us through what you saw from this one, mate. Yeah, it's a good win. I think, um, yeah, Fenno wouldn't be happy with his captain, Sam Doherty, there, mm. um, obviously with some issues that he's working through moving forward. So definitely capable, even though 1967 doesn't look like a strong score. Uh, would have been really pushing for pick of the week if he'd, if he'd put captaincy on Oliver, for example, who he has. Uh, but yeah, Fenno, you know, looking pretty strong. Uh, I think Callahan, as as noted, sort of pulled through this week for him. Tom Powell's obviously a bit of an issue, as we mentioned with Ben. Uh, on the B sharp side, um, probably a similar story to what we were just talking about um, before with those those blokes in the sixties of Tom Mitchell and Andy McGrath. Yeah, you know, that's the that's the difference at the moment between a, a sixty and a hundred. If you've got two or three players doing that, then that's that's really going to hurt. So, yeah, good win though for Tom. Yeah, absolutely. Spot on, mate. Uh, love that analysis. All right, let's talk about our last matchup here. It was my boys up against uh, the Smiths Crips. And to be fair, it was it was a pretty good matchup um, looking, at, looking at it, I guess. Liam was a little bit unlucky uh, with a couple of his players not quite delivering what they usually do in terms of, yeah, Cornelio there and James Sicily really stands out. Um, yeah, it sort of looked like it was going to be pretty close coming into Easter Monday um, with Tom Stewart for me versus, you know, a Sicily and a Warple. So um, disappointing for him. I think the most disappointing one was he brought in Elliot Yo uh, for, for Constable. So for Elliot Yo to sort of, yeah, a little bit of a flag there that he's coming back from that injury and the Eagle subbed him off. It's just, yeah, maybe not. Um, it's going to take him a few weeks. I think Elliot Yo will still be a good pick for Liam, but just didn't have the instant impact um, that you would probably like. Um, in terms of that, for me, you know, I, I, I went um, Hayden Young out, just been sick of him really, just went back to Tom Stewart. Uh, a bit disappointing from Tom Stewart, but I think he'll be fine. And then Cosie Pickett, uh, a nice little pod there for me. Um, from, from Warple. So I was just a bit sick of Warple as well. I've been a bit more ruthless this year, I think, with my trading early on. I think I've tried to get rid of um, anyone who's had a, you know been underperforming or anything like that. I've been pretty ruthless, so it's worked for me. And hopefully, um, yeah, Cosy Pickett can sort of generate some cash the next few weeks. But, uh, yeah, it's been a nice start for my boys. But just, yeah, was just trying to get things going and yeah this week is is a bit of a minefield with day and uh, Doherty potentially out so yeah we will uh, we'll move on mate I think unless you want to add anything more no no just uh yeah two strong sides and uh, obviously uh, your side right near the the pointy end of the table at the moment so um yeah a really strong title defense yeah hopefully um yeah, we'll see how we go. All right, let's look ahead um, to this round. And, well, it starts from the top, mate. We've got Sam, the undefeated Sam, our first place team at the moment, up against your boys, Rabs. Uh, what are you thinking going into this one? Obviously, we've talked about it a fair bit. Um, most teams are going to definitely going to have one trade, one forced trade, but potentially could have two. You're in a fortunate position that you don't own, Will Day. Uh, what's your sort of uh, process this week against Sam? Yeah, uh, yeah, really tough match, obviously. Sam undefeated. Um, he's got a really strong side. So, um, yeah, definitely looking to try and improve my side. But, uh, yeah, having said that, still very conscious of the end game and um, I'm not getting drawn too much into doing things. So, yeah, we'll wait and see. But, yeah, I, I think it'll be relatively close. I think looking through the pods, it's, you know, it's pretty evenly matched and probably going to hinge on how some of those top-end guys go and, and what he's able to do with Doherty and, and Day, we'll sort of wait and see. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll wait and see. I think it'll be close. But time yeah, couldn't agree more, mate. I think it is going to be uh, pretty close there. And we'll see what um, yeah yourself and Sam will do with Doherty. Uh, let's move on. We've got Total Eclipse of the Heart 
Up against Team GC, a quick prediction uh, from you, mate. Yeah, uh, I'm probably I'm leaning towards total eclipse of the heart, but um, yeah, not by much. So I think this one will be fairly close. Both teams have had some good moments, uh, and both teams have had some pretty ordinary moments already in what's been a short season. <laughs> so uh, we'll wait and see. But I, I think total eclipse of the heart might just sneak home. Nice, nice. All right, the Glen Burton Fan Club up against uh, King Hunter. Is Newley going to get his first win this week, Rabs? Yes, he will. I, I think the Glen Men fan club are a better side than uh, their latter position uh, and definitely better than being winless. I think uh, I think they'll get the win here. Excellent. All right. My God, your Liberatore, our pig of the week up against uh, the spud of the week, Hoffleberry FC. Uh, do we see an upset here potentially, Rabs? Any chance? I don't, but I, I actually think it. You know, when you when you say you've got you know the pig versus the spud, you'd be expecting to look at it and see a world of differences. And ironically, there's only about seven pods, mm. um, which is quite amazing, really. So uh, I actually think this one will be closer than what that would suggest, but I still think the Liberatores will win. Okay, let's move on uh, to the keys up against the Burp and Burp Burtons. It is third versus seventh. Um, Jake, a chance of an upset here potentially, but form would have to suggest Brad and just looking at his team, he's looking in a good spot. What do you think with this one, mate? Yeah, I think this is a cracking match. Um, you know, Jake, as we've said, has made a really positive start to the year, but this is a massive challenge for him. Uh, I actually think Jake's boys can win this game, to be honest. I, I think there's a bit to play at in terms of, uh, you know, what's happening with, sorry, just trying to flip through. They're both owners of Doherty and Day, so it'll be interesting to see what they do there. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think this is an absolutely cracking game. I, I think I'm leaning just towards Jake, but um, they're, they're two very strong sides. Yeah, absolutely. We'll be uh, looking forward to tuning into that one and, and keeping an eye on how the scoring's going. And I think... Uh, yeah, we'll find out about Will Day tomorrow, but it'll be interesting to see what coaches sort of do. Um, and with Lockie Cowan first up, um, to, if he can pull out a 50-plus, maybe, um, that might make the decision a little bit easier to hold a Will Day if he can get that two week down to one week or something like that. So uh, we will wait and see. Let's talk about – we've got some really good matchups here to finish off. We've got the Crouching Lions up against Phenomenal – um, what do you see here, mate? I just want to have a look at this one too because this this looks a very tasty matchup. Yeah, it does. Uh, again, two two strong sides, uh, and as we've said, it's indicative of the competition this year that uh, there's not a lot between everyone. So, I'm probably leaning towards phenomenal. If I'm honest, looking at the mm -hmm. pods, I just think there's probably more upside to those pods in terms of what they're capable of. But again, you know, it's one of those ones that. Uh, it could go either way because the, they're probably not going to be a lot between them, but I think Phenomenal might sneak home. Yeah, it's going to be pretty tight. I think, yeah, big, big, big watch on some of the premiums, I think, this week, um, especially those that are playing at, you know, in the Adelaide Hills or a Norwood Oval. It, it, we could be in for some weird scoring. So, And there's a bit of weather around this weekend, so I, I'm pretty pretty confident anything could happen here, really. Um, so it's, it's it might be a bit of a weird round. So we'll wait and see. Uh, let's talk about this game. This is huge. It's the Guns and Rosies um, who are stuck in twelfth and have yeah struggled a little bit the last few weeks up against the Smiths Crips, mate. Uh, what do you see happening here? This is a huge matchup. Um, you know the r ramifications for both <laughs> sides here are, are pretty big. Um, yeah, I, I really. I, I actually think that the Guns and Rosies might be in trouble here. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think they've got a strong side, but Smith Scripps are a, a pretty strong side. Um, again, I probably think there might be a little bit more upside just based on current form to some guys like LDU, who didn't probably perform the way um, that he has been of late. And, and hopefully, you know, for a lot of people's sake, Sicily's going to do more than 49. <laughs> so... I, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm thinking probably the Crips might sneak home, but um, yeah, it'd be a big result if the Guns and Rosies were to lose another game. Uh, and I, I question what sort of internet perception slash uh, 
you know, just general uh, ability to comprehend movements uh, might be available to the uh, coach in Bali. So um, for that reason, it's miscript. Yeah, it is a fair point, mate. We've uh, yeah, we've been doing this for a long time, and any overseas trip is is dangerous in terms of internet and getting those time zones spot on. So uh, we'll wait and see what happens there. Uh, finally, just myself up against uh, the B sharp, so it should be a good contest here. Um, just off the top of my head, I think as it loads, I think there's a lot of pods here, Rabs. Uh, what, what do you see happening? Yeah, probably not as many as I thought there'd be, to be honest. Mm. But um, uh, I think I think your boys will will win, uh, Scott. I think again, just for the main reason, going to those uh, those pods, just capable of much higher ceilings. So I think that'll be the the difference there. Yeah, it looks like the um, the Melbourne Essendon game very relevant there with um, yeah McGrath, Paris, Setterfield, and Grundy all being pods uh, for Dale. So that'll be that'll be good to be at the game. Uh, to see all that unfold. But, yeah, I think for my guys, I think, yeah, just keep building. Um, it's a bit unfortunate with, yeah, Doherty. Hopefully, fingers crossed for those day owners that he gets down to one or he gets off completely because it'd be a real shame if he, yeah, is out for two weeks because he's been a really good pick. Um, and who do you go to back there? Like, it's just a bit of a disaster if you've already got Tom Stewart and certainly for, for, for me, if Will Day is out, I'm not really that confident in who I'm bringing in. So um, fingers crossed. We'll wait and see. And, uh, well, enjoy the gather round. I think that's that'll about do us, mate. We're, uh, we've done pretty well here, just both of us. We've got a couple of minutes remaining. Uh, any any final words for the podcast this week? Uh, no, other than the fact, I, I think you hit the nail on the head there, Scotty, uh, before that uh, gather round, very interesting round ahead and uh, wouldn't be surprised if there are some strange scores uh, and I even went to enter my tips in today and it's, it's hard to get a gauge on what's going to happen because the home and away is irrelevant uh, apart mm. from the Crows and Port games and uh, it's interesting. I, I think it's going to be a really interesting round to see what teams produce. So we will see what uh, what everyone can do. No, spot on, mate. I think it will be a, a bit of a different round, but uh, very much looking forward to going to a few games live and uh, tuning in throughout the weekend. All right, we might leave it there. Good luck, everybody. Um, and we'll yeah, if any more carnage happens tomorrow night, we'll be uh, yeah, strap yourselves in. Could be anything. See ya.